Uh, welcome to the session tonight, which is our community update back to school informational session for the school year. Uh, if we haven't had a chance to cross paths yet, it is an absolute pleasure to meet you under these circumstances virtually. Uh, my name is Mr. Medway, uh, and it is my pleasure to be the new LSK Elementary School principal. Uh, if you're looking for some more information about myself, uh, you'll see that recently in social media, uh, there was a newsletter that was posted uh, not too long ago that included information about uh, my work experience, uh, my academic experience, and also some fun hobbies and interests of mine. Tonight's session is going to be a quick meet and greet between me and you, just as I'm doing now. Hello out there. Uh, but the main focus of tonight is to talk about what to expect moving forward with this back to school transition to online learning. Uh, so just to make sure that I come through as clear as possible, uh, it's at this point in time, I'm gonna take a really quick moment and I'm gonna turn off my camera by clicking the stop camera here. Uh, hopefully this will cut down on the amount of bandwidth, but at the same time also increase you being able to see our screen, uh, hear us clearly, and ultimately see some samples as we move on throughout the presentation of what to expect of online learning. So a few housekeeping items to mention before we get started. Uh, first, there is going to be a Q&A available to you throughout the session. Uh, you'll see if you take your cursor or just look at the bottom of your Zoom screen at the bottom, there is a Q&A icon in the middle point of your screen. Uh, we'll be taking questions all throughout the session tonight, and we are planning to carve out about 10 minutes at the very end where we're gonna hopefully field most of those questions. Uh, if we don't get to those questions tonight, we'll do our best to. Uh, we are hoping to hopefully schedule uh, a Q&A session before the official kickoff of the school year as well. Uh, so uh, it's without further ado that myself, uh, Mrs. Salt, as you'll see here, and also Mrs. Shauna, uh, will get this webinar started. And let's do one last quick check to see what we got up to. Look at that. We broke 40. Okay. Uh, if you know a friend or a community member that you think probably should be here tonight, uh, or just for whatever reason wasn't able to make it. Uh, I want to also assure folks that are attending that this session is being recorded. So if in the event you know somebody that wasn't able to attend and can't check out the live webinar session we're doing tonight, not a problem. Uh, we should be able to post a link out to folks tomorrow. You'll just be able to access that link the same way you did uh, today and you can see a recording of this video too. Okay, uh, I wanted to kickstart things this evening with some sincere thank yous. Uh, behind the, the scenes at LISK Elementary School and, and really throughout the whole organization, uh, we've all been working immensely hard to get this online learning experience up and running uh, to help out with this transition as soon as possible. Uh, because of that, I really want to take a couple moments at the beginning and sincerely uh, send out a few big thank yous and shout outs to a bunch of folks. Uh, I'm going to start first with our COO, Kaylee Thompson. Uh, behind the scenes, Kaylee has been answering my emails uh, from 6 a.m. in the morning to often 9 p.m. on night uh, over the weekend and late into many evenings. Uh, she's been able to really quickly hop in, get signatures on important things we need to get the software we need to make this whole transition happen. So shout out to her and thank you to her first. Uh, we also want to do a sincere thank you to our educational director, uh, Kate LaForme. Uh, she's always been there for constant direction and support, uh, especially in these really uh, busy times trying to get ready for the school year. Uh, Jacqueline Martin has also played an integral role in this change. Uh, as you may know, she's the media and communications coordinator. Behind the scenes, she's been doing a lot of work with promoting uh, this event. She's also set up uh, how we're going to be accessing online learning, which you'll see a little bit later on in the demo. Uh, also, a big shout out to Council. Uh, thank you for coming together again under little notice to make some very important timely decisions to make sure that we set up the students as much as possible for success. Uh, shout out to Jim Varga. Jim Varga is a technical consultant. He's been really hopping in as well, making the timely decisions we need and setting us up with the technical support that we need to move forward with this big change. Uh, going right to the LSK staff, a uh, huge shout out to the tech group. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Mrs. Shauna, Mrs. Higgins, uh, Mrs. Salt, uh, Mrs. Cares, Mrs. Hanna. Uh, all of these folks have been meeting regularly behind the scenes to put together this vision and shape what you're about to see tonight. Uh, aside from that, also just a big shout out to the teachers. Uh, we've asked a lot of them in the last couple weeks, uh, and we're putting a lot of them these next little while on their shoulders to help this whole change happen. 
Uh, so we just wanted to really take a quick moment and recognize everybody who's been contributing to this initiative. It is a must appreciated and we couldn't do it without you. Uh, it's in short, you know, just an amazing example of what can happen uh, when a community comes together to help with the transition at this sort of scale. Okay, uh, without further ado, I'm sure you're here tonight to find more about what to expect with online learning. So now that the thank yous are out of the way, let's jump right into our agenda. Here's what we're hoping to tackle in the short hour that we have tonight. First, you're probably wondering, when are we getting our backpacks? Uh, when are we getting some resources? We've heard about iPads, when can we expect to receive them? We're gonna kick things off with exactly that. We're gonna let you know when they're coming. We're gonna share with you some more information about the resources that are coming with them uh, and a few other details that are important to mention as well. In addition to that, we're also gonna be talking to you then about the pedagogical tools that are available to you uh, or the learning activities. We hope to showcase tonight a whole bunch of learning activities that uh, yourself and your students uh, or your child, I should say, uh, we'll have access to through our learning management system or LMS D2L uh, or also applications that are going to be available to them in the iPads that they receive. We also want to give you an accurate picker, picture of what to expect. Uh, so we want to give you an idea of how much time are they going to be online? How much time are they going to be uh, virtually with their teacher? How much time are they expected to uh, work on assignments uh, in particular courses? So to hopefully give you a bit of uh, visibility into that, we're gonna be showcasing to you some general themes across the school, uh, and we'll also touch upon a couple sample teachers' agendas as well. Uh, of course, culture is immensely important uh, to us in the school, so we're gonna be talking about how we're incorporating culture even in this virtual environment. Uh, then, it is my pleasure to showcase to you a live demo. This is where I'll actually be going in as a LSK student. You'll see how I log in, uh, you'll see the tools I interact with, so you can get a better sense of what is this actually going to look like as you move forward with online learning. And then as promised, to wrap up tonight's session, we're going to be holding a very quick Q&A uh, where we try to field some of the many questions that I'm sure you guys are probably having and thinking about. Okay, now that the agenda is out of the way, we are going to start tonight with a very important date to remember. So if you haven't caught wind of this through social media, September 21st, mark it in your calendar. It's a huge event. Uh, day for the school. It's our first official day with online learning. Uh, and by this we mean this is the first day that we're actually going to be starting classes in our D2L courses. We're going to kick things off with a virtual school assembly. You'll see that in just a second. And then you'll be able to see how that student schedule is going to work for them throughout the school day. Uh, it's at this point in time where it is my pleasure to pass things over to Mrs. Salt. She's going to be talking about the next item on the agenda which is the backpack and container that's coming. On the LSK family, I hope everybody can hear me. My microphone is sh showing me that, I, that you can. So it's great to see so many people online. Miigwech for joining us. Um, so everyone gets a backpack, a container, and an iPad. Um, I'd love to do it like Oprah, but I would feel kind of silly all alone in my um, office at home. <laughs> Just something to keep in mind when the iPads are delivered that they are the property of LSK. Um, they are for the students to use for the duration of um, our virtual learning. Um, at the end of the school year or at the end of the term they will be required to be returned back to the school. So um, please take very good care of them. Um, they are the property of the school. Okay, thank you Mr. Medway. We can go to the next slide. Okay, so what's going to be included? Um, we have been blessed in our community um, to be receiving a backpack at the beginning of every school year. The kids get um, a ton of um, um, things that they can need for school, like pencil crayons and notebooks and markers and things like that. So it's going to look a little bit different um, this year. Uh, K-3 to will be um, receiving a bin of materials. Um, the teachers in the primary division felt that um, it would be a great way for the little ones to be able to organize their materials. Um, and then the grades four to eight will, will still be receiving the backpack with materials. So in these um, containers, you're going to find a variety of things. The teachers and EAs have been working so hard thinking of all the things that would supplement learning at home. Um, in addition to all of the things that social and health have provided um, in the backpack um, normally. So you're going to find things like writing and drawing tools like journals and pencils and markers and, and crayons for little ones. 
you're going to find math manipulatives. So during online learning, a teacher might say, go grab your counters. We're going to need them today for our math lesson. Um, there'll be rulers, calculators, base 10 blocks, um, and different kinds of charts to help with math. Most classes have a literacy toolkit um, that includes, um, especially for the little ones, ABC boards, um, sound boards, a personal dictionary, sight word rings, reading strategies, flashcards, that kind of stuff. Um, and then maybe even some songs that might be sung together on a Zoom meeting uh, with a teacher. Um, and then of course, everyone's going to receive an iPad. So that'll all be inside of the bin or the backpack when you, uh, when we, when you pick them up. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is really important information. Um, this, as Mr. Medway had pointed out, we are going to be posting um, a copy of this recording, but you might want to just jot this down right now, um, that we are going to be um, asking families to come to the school to pick up their backpack, bin, and iPad, backpack or bin, not both. Um, and we're gonna start that next Thursday. So this is important. Anybody with the last name that starts with A to L are going to be invited to come on Thursday. And then on Friday, last name starting with M to Z um, will come to the school. And then the pickup times are there. So that time in between uh, will give the staff a break as well as um, making sure that we can you know, check our list and make sure everybody got what they needed. Um, really super impo important with COVID protocols in place that you remain in your vehicle. Um, let the staff bring the materials to you. Um, and then if you can't make it during that time, um, you need to call the school to make an appointment. Um, you are not um, able to walk into the building at this point without an appointment. Um, so please call the school. The phone number is on uh, the website. Um, yeah, so just make sure if you can't come during those times um, that you call and make an appointment. And next slide. And back to Mr. Medway. Yeah, so as Mrs. Salt mentioned, we're incredibly fortunate to be in the situation that we're in where we have all those school uh, supplies readily available, especially considering uh, that we're getting iPads. Uh, so a couple things that I really want to emphasize on that note. Uh, as Mrs. Salt mentioned beforehand, first and foremost, uh, that iPad is for you, uh, but it is still the property of LSK Elementary School. Uh, so it's immensely important that you take care of that iPad. Uh, you'll see up to the right, there's a small picture uh, of a baby wrapped up in a towel. We want you to treat that iPad the exact same way. Uh, take care of it, be careful with it as much as possible so that it lasts a long time and it has a good iPad life. Uh, in addition to that, we also really want to emphasize the iPad that we're giving you is going to be given to you for educational purposes. So we're really encouraging students to use this as an educational tool because that's what it is. So with that being said, we want to make sure that when you're on that, you're using it for educational reasons. So by that, we mean going on appropriate applications, going on appropriate websites. Uh, and luckily within the school, uh, we've been able to set up a uh, MDM, uh, which is a fancy acronym to say a mobile device manager. So this will help us control uh, what we're able to do within the iPads. Uh, I see that a few questions are coming in. Uh, we're just going to park those over the side for now and we'll hit them at the end. But the main point that I really want to try to get across here is uh, the iPad is a great form uh, of educational equipment. Try to be careful with it. It's very expensive and make sure that you're using it for exactly that and that is educational purposes. Uh, the only other detail I'm going to mention at the bottom there is please make sure that at the end of the school year, you return the device to the school uh, or upon request if we need it back for another reason. Uh, and it's at that point in time, I'm going to transition things over to Mrs. Sharna. Gwetch James. Ani families. Mino Nagjik. Good evening. I'm going to touch base with you for a couple of moments with regards to how is your child going to engage in learning activities online. I'm going to introduce you two terms that you may have seen or heard um, in the news or media are talking about synchronous and asynchronous lessons. So synchronous lessons means that those students will be logging online to be meeting with their teacher virtually. Asynchronous means activities will be posted to the Brightspace platform in which students can independently access them and work on them at their own time. 
So synchronous lessons will slowly, solely, sorry, be literacy and numeracy activities along with Anishinaabe Moan classes. And the posted lessons are gonna to gear towards more of the other subject areas, like daily physical activity, some land-based activities, arts, science, health, social studies, and then geography and history in their intermediate grades. Next slide, please, James. So when we have a look here at how many minutes does my child expect to be participating in online, it's really important that we decided that a one size fits all approach would not work for LSK. We cannot expect the kindergartens to be online for the same amount that a grade seven, eight student who's entering secondary school um, would spend that same amount of time. So we've kind of looked at the divisions and geared it to where as they progress through the grades, time online will increase slightly for each division. So you can see, for example, and the kindergarten student would be expected to be online live with their teacher for approximately three and a half hours a week. And this will look like a variety of ways. It could look like in a whole group, it could look in a small group, it could be individual one-on-one. -on -one. And then you can see in the asynchronous session, for example, for kindergarten, they would be expecting for three hours a week, so approximately a half an hour a day doing some other type of online activity. So that changes progressively as it goes up to the intermediate, where the intermediates are expected to be online with their teacher for seven hours a week, which is just over an hour a day, and expected to do about the equivalent of time for independent work on their own through posted lessons. So this looks a little bit different from what we did in the spring. In the spring, it was mostly kind of work packages and there wasn't much contact with their students um, and their teacher. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had opportunities for teachers to touch base with their students regular, regularly at at least two points during the day and also um, have open office hours and times for families, parents, guardians, students to contact their teacher for additional support and to also utilize education assistance and special education resource teachers at the school. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this is just a sample of kind of what a typical day may look like. And I'm saying may because depending on your teacher's schedule, um, that will decide whether or not they're going to be having literacy and numeracy on the day, same day, or they may be alternating literacy and numeracy. But for the most part, this is what it could look like. So your student or your child, sorry, may be activating online. I didn't put a specific time yet because it's geared towards each specific grade. Um, so for example, they could be online at 9.30 for a whole group for half an hour. Um, and then they may have a break and then log on for a small group interaction for the same amount of time. And then at some point in the afternoon, they may have to log on again for a small group numeracy or a math session with their teacher. Then their independent learning time um, consists of them working independently on their own. So whether or not that's scheduled to be during the day or in the evening, this session will also be used to familiarize them. They're already familiar actually with the apps that we're going to be using, RAS Kids, IXL, that'll also give them time to practice with those as well. So as you can see, we want to make sure that we're touching base with students at least twice a day. Each teacher has designed a schedule to ensure success for their students. So um, these schedules will be coming home in the backpacks and the containers that will be picked up next week. Um, I think it's also important to note that there is also some time in the schedule for one-to-one -one intervention. Um, if you find your child is not understanding the concept, there's also time to set up schedules with the teacher for that reteaching component. Um, next one, please, Mr. Midway. So here we have Cultural Incorporated. Um, I think what's really important is this virtual online space actually allows us to not only showcase, but um, reach out to not only LSK students, but now families and community members when we're looking at how we integrate culture at LSK. So as always, cultural integration happens throughout all subject areas. 
during both the online sessions and through their posted lessons. Um, it's important to know that we will continue to use Can We De Module 1, which is our mural story, in order to integrate those aspects into the curriculum. Students are going to continue to have an Anishinaabe Moan instruction at scheduled time, times during the week. Um, I believe every class will be have, having two live sessions, and Mr. Shawana will also be posting uh, lessons per division. And the great thing about these posted lessons are it allows families to engage and listen and hear um, the language itself as well. We will continue with the morning prayer during a weekly virtual assembly. Our seven grandfather teachings will be moving to an online awards tool and a digital certificate. We will still follow the 13 moons as our calendar. Seasonal virtual events will just be happening online. Um, we've even incorporated some Indigenous contemporary events, which will be posted on the Brightspace homepage when you get a chance to check that out, um, along with some other videos and resources to enhance the Indigenous perspective. So I'm quite excited about um, how we can actually use this online tool to further um, educate uh, the students and just do it in a different way. Okay, miigwech Mr. Medway. Uh, so the only other point that I really wanted to reinforce, which uh, Mrs. Shawan alluded to, is we have high expectations for students. Uh, and because of that, we're setting higher expectations in the online learning environment. So as she mentioned, uh, the expectations going into September are going to be higher than what the norm was last year. Uh, so I know uh, towards the tail end of the year, some online components were being started. Uh, I know that there are also work packages. We really want to build upon some of that uh, early uh, familiarity uh, to get you to a uh, more firm ground when it's related to online learning. Uh, and I want to share with you too that we are all in this together. Uh, students, uh, parents, uh, staff, uh, we are all going to be learning from each other and continuing to support each other as we support our students uh, to set them up for success. Uh, so without further ado, uh, you probably have a few ideas in the back of your mind of what to expect with online learning. And hopefully some of those ideas at this point in time have really started to become cemented and you can uh, picture what this is actually going to look like. But some of you might still find it to be a little bit too conceptual. Uh, to help with that, it's my hope now to take down this presentation and actually showcase to you a live demonstration which I'm going to call a day in the life of an LSK student to showcase to you what they can expect as we start to move towards online learning in the coming weeks. So as promised, I'll take down my PowerPoint and I'm going to transition this over. Uh, the first thing I wanna point out is how students will be accessing the online learning environment. Uh, if you haven't been to lskelementary.com, which is the website I'm on right here, you'll notice that not too long ago, there was a very small change. I'm gonna take a moment and I'm gonna scroll down to switch. You'll see on my right that there's now a button here called LS, LSK Student and Parent Guardian Online Learning Brightspace Access. In the future, if any folks are interested in accessing online learning, whether that's parents, guardians, students, this is where you're going to come in to log in to the platform. Now you're probably thinking right about now, uh, Mr. Medway, I don't have login credentials. You're right. Uh, our plan is to also provide this information uh, when you come to pick up your backpacks. So uh, with a little bit of online virtual magic, uh, assuming you have credentials, we're going to pretend for this evening, you would click this button here and it's going to prompt you to log into the web page. Uh, once you're logged in, it'll take you to this type of landing. So if you haven't seen this before, uh, ladies and gentlemen attending, Welcome officially to your online learning environment. Uh, there's a ton of things to showcase to you here. Tonight is going to be a very quick tour of what a student or yourself might engage with in the coming weeks as we make that full transition to fully online learning. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna point out are a couple of these widgets. In case you haven't seen widgets before or you've never heard of that, windows of information are really just widgets. Uh, that's this area here that I'm highlighting, which is kind of a rectangular shape. Uh, this here is also a widget. Let me talk to you a little bit about them. To get started, you need to develop some familiarity with the tools. 
Uh, to help with that, we've created a announcements message here that everyone is going to see when you first log in to D2L. So when you log in, like just, just like you saw me do a second ago, you can come in, you can see this announcements widget. We're going to recommend that you scroll down a smidge and you start by learning how to navigate. Each of these videos ranges between one and three minutes, and it's going to showcase to you how do you get into a course? Uh, how do you check messages? All sort of the basics to get acquainted with moving around the platform. Once you learn how to navigate, we're going to scroll down a little lower, and you'll see that there's a video here called Brightspace, for, uh, Brightspace Portfolio. Uh, inside this tool, this will be how students submit evidence of their learning and how also teachers will review evidence of learning. Uh, once you get your iPad and you're logged inside here, take a look at this video. You'll be able to see how you can get set up with that. Uh, and then finally, another tool that we're going to be using predominantly in the courses is a content tool called Lessons. Lessons is where all of your teachers are going to store learning materials for your students. So that might be something like watch this YouTube video, take a look at this Word document, uh, read this bit of text, try playing this game. Uh, inside this video, you'll see how you can access lessons and how you can view important learning materials within your course. And in just a second, I'll show you how to access your courses as well. We're going to keep moving right along. So aside from this help announcements widget here, I'm going to showcase to you our LSK weekly virtual assemblies. Uh, as previously mentioned, we still want to continue doing, where possible, a lot of the great things that the school is used to doing. Uh, so with that, to make sure we have a chance to still come together as a group, we're going to be hosting on the very first day, uh, which will be the 21st of September at 8.30 a.m., a school-wide assembly. And it's very easy to attend. All you have to do is click the link, just like everybody did today, to join today's meeting. So if you're in the meeting right now, you're already doing great. It's the exact same workflow to attend our school-wide assemblies. And over time, this is where we're going to be recognizing students uh, who really showcase the seven grandfather teachings. We might have guest speakers come in from time to time. Uh, we might provide other important announcements. That's going to be occurring as we start online learning every Monday from 8.30 to 9 a.m. Uh, come and join us if you can. We'd love to see you there. Let's keep moving right along. Uh, as Mrs. Shauna also mentioned, it's immensely important that we're incorporating culture inside here. So as you're very familiar with, we really want to try to incorporate the grandfather teachings. Uh, just as we've done in the past, we associate a grandfather teaching to each month of the school year. So you'll see for September, the first one is respect. In this widget, you're going to see a personalized message created by Mr. Shauna, which is going to talk about what respect means uh, and also how to communicate respect in the language. Uh, and this is something that we really hope not just students benefit from, but also families too. So take a look at this because each month we're going to be changing this to the different teaching and you'll be able to see video messages right here in the language from our very own Mr. Shaw. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about, in general, the seven grandfather teachings, you kind of want to look ahead because you can't wait until November or so on. Uh, you can come on down here and you can also see this video, which provides a nice summary. Uh, as Mrs. Shauna also mentioned, uh, if I go down a little bit lower, we want to keep our students and yourself up to date on contemporary issues that impact uh, Indigenous individuals. So this is a live feed to Indigenous stories provided by CBC. If you're ever interested in a read or you'd like to practice reading something with your child, come on side here. This will update on a daily basis, showcasing to you important stories that are happening throughout the world. Uh, beneath that, you're also going to see a Twitter widget. Uh, this is a live feed which showcases all the tweets that come directly from MCFN. So just in case you're worried about missing out on the latest and greatest information, come on down inside here, scroll down, and you can see that information listed right here. This will help folks uh, stay up to date with what's happening in the community while they're inside online. Okay, already a lot to take in, I know. Let's keep moving. Uh, you'll see along the top here, there's some different links. So over time, we really want D2L to be a place that you can go to to access everything associated with the school. Uh, so to help facilitate that, we've started with a few links that you'll see listed along the top area here, which is what we call the nav bar. Uh, so if I click the help icon here, you're going to see that there's a bunch of help resources. If you're ever inside this online learning platform, uh, Brightspace or D2L is what we call it, 
uh, and you kind of get stuck, maybe you're trying to find content but you're not sure where to go, there's some really helpful videos here called Brightspace Tutorials. Uh, these will showcase to you, in addition to the videos below, extra workflows you can do in the system if you need help. If you're more of a reader, there's also some documentation here, uh, and the community icon here will also allow you to connect with other people who are using online learning too. Uh, aside from that, you'll notice that we have a symbol here of LSK himself. Uh, if we click on this, you'll see that this is actually going to take us to the school website. Uh, so if you ever need to hop back from here to here, just click that link, it'll zoom you back to this page. And over time, you're gonna kind of see this become our central hub. Uh, so let's go back over here and take a look at what else we have. If you're interested in seeing what's going on uh, within the Facebook page, you can also check that out as well. Uh, if I click on this here, it's just going to redirect you to Mrs. Saga's at the Credit First Nation Facebook page. So again, uh, get used to checking some of these spaces because they're gonna keep you updated with information, uh, information like a webinar that you probably found out today, uh, or hopefully even before. Uh, so there's also the awards tool here. Uh, if your child's lucky enough to earn one of our digital certificates, uh, recognizing them of a seven grandfather teaching, you'll see that that certificate is actually made available here. And a cool thing about this tool is even though it's digital, it will provide you with a PDF that you can actually print off uh, and post, of course, on the Fridge at Home, which is always important. Uh, so that's the basics of the main page here, but I haven't showed you yet how do students access their courses. Uh, luckily for us tonight, one of our brave teachers, uh, Mrs. Salt, has volunteered us to look at her course. So what you're going to see next is as if you were a grade one, two student, what to expect as we start full online learning. So that student, to access a course, all they do is they select this icon here. It kind of looks like an ice cube tray. I've also been, uh, been heard it called a waffle iron. Whatever helps you remember it, just remember this is how you access the course. Uh, now for me, you're seeing a lot of courses come up. For your child, you're likely going to see just their grade listed here, okay? Uh, and if in the event there's ever an issue where you don't see a grade, just give the school a call and we'll make sure we get you sorted. But in this case, as promised, Mrs. Salt suggested that we can use her course as a showcase. So let's do that really quick before she changes her mind. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hop into grade one, two. So this would be what a grade one, two student would see when they access the course. Uh, so right away, you will see inside the course, uh, a very nice uh, uh, image here of Mrs. Salt. Uh, you're also gonna see on the left-hand side, a really nice welcome announcement. Uh, each student, when you start, will be able to see a welcome message personalized by the teacher to them. So here we can see a very nice uh, image of Mrs. Salt's new horse. Uh, how about that? Not too bad. Uh, in addition to that, I also want to showcase to you that schedule that was mentioned beforehand. So you're probably thinking to yourself, where should my son or daughter be each day as we start online? Uh, there's a very handy schedule that's going to be put up right at the top of the page on the right hand side here within every course. So even if you're not a grade one, two student, it's going to be located in the same spot if you're in seven, eight or five, six or what have you. Here is Mrs. Salt online weekly schedule. And this is what's going to look a little bit different depending upon each course. And that's because although all of our courses have common elements, it's still immensely important to us that we are personalizing each course and tailoring it to each of our students unique levels. Uh, especially their developmental levels uh, for each grade. So uh, if in the event you wanted to expand this and make this bigger, I'll just point out, uh, each course will also have a link here that you can select, and this will open up a much bigger version of that schedule in case you want to have it on a bigger page or maybe even print off and put somewhere at home as well. And this will be uh, your legend, really, to follow to see where we're supposed to be for each day. Uh, as uh, Mrs. Shawana mentioned, it's going to be a combination of asynchronous and synchronous learning. So let's talk about uh, the asynchronous component. If I scroll down a little bit, this is an area here called activity feed. Activity feed is going to be an area that your teacher posts things. So if there's something they want you to do, uh, like maybe a land-based learning activity at home, you're going to see that there's a post here from the teacher asking them to do a certain assignment. So normally, if I go back to my schedule and it says something like, okay, it's uh, 12 o'clock, for example, it's time for an asynchronous session, you should be able to come in, you'll see a post here from that teacher at that time, which will tell you what that is something you can work on uh, during that time. 
And because it's asynchronous, if it's something that you can't attend at the exact moment, uh, it's not going anywhere, you can always come back and get caught up on it afterwards. For the synchronous component or the live video sessions, I'm gonna scroll up a little bit here. And I'm just gonna point out that there's actually going to be a Zoom link. Uh, so in this course here, I think there's been a slight adjustment to it, uh, but I can still see it right here. Yes, so there is a Zoom link right here. Uh, some of our courses are still in construction, but what you will see in the next little while is this area here will have a Zoom link, which you can click on to set up. Uh, the other area that I wanna point out is also content. So content is going to be where all of the learning materials are stored for your son or daughter. And we wanna make sure that this was really easy to see. So inside a course, if I select content here, you'll see that that'll take me inside the content tool. Every single one of our teachers, regardless of what grade they're in, uh, is doing the same content structure on the main level. Uh, so what you'll see when you log in, beginning September 21st, is everybody has this area here created by the week. Uh, and we really did this as a school to try to make sure that it's consistent and clear for you guys to find what it is you're looking for when you're looking for it. Uh, so for instance, if I click on week one, I'll see here she's already started to build out the first week. In this case, she has a Monday. Uh, when we click on Monday, we see that there's a learning material. So if I click on this, this will show me the first resource. Okay, great. So in this case, uh, she's decided to include a helpful video about counting. So if I click on this, we can see a glimpse of what it is. Now you likely won't be able to uh, hear the audio associated with that, but I will reassure you, it's quite entertaining. Okay. Uh, aside from this video here, if I go down to Tuesday, you're going to find some more resources. Uh, so I'll go down and I'll click on the alphabet song here. Here we have another resource. It happens to also be a video. So I'll click on this. And again, it's something you can also work on. And you might be thinking with this, okay, so the video is helpful. What am I supposed to do with it? Uh, if I go down a little bit lower, you also may find from your teachers some personalized messages. Uh, so here exactly is Mrs. Salt uh, talking to folks uh, inside the course what to do with that resource. So again, uh, it's very likely you're not going to be hearing the audio right now, but I will also assure you once more, uh, it, was, it was very well perfectly said. Well done, Mrs. Salt. <laughs> uh, that is going to be some of the bigger highlights uh, for the course. Uh, just to showcase you a couple other samples, uh, I will point out that if I head over to uh, another course here, uh, you will see that everybody has a very similar structure. Uh, so for each course name, it's going to say the grade, it's going to say the last name, and it's going to say some information here. Uh, and that's it. Uh, as a starting point, that is the big thing that we really want to emphasize uh, as a school. Over time, we might be adding in additional tools uh, such as uh, maybe some discussions or maybe some assignments or maybe some quizzes. But as a starting point, uh, that's going to be some of the bigger workflows. Uh, the only thing I'm just going to quickly adjust here is if I take off that view for a moment, I just want to give you a heads up that you will also eventually in the course see portfolio. Uh, this is going to be a very important tool for us with submitting uh, and also accepting and giving back assignments. Uh, so over time, when your teacher gives uh, a certain asynchronous activity that they want you to do uh, and then submit, we'll be using this to collect that, give feedback and then send it back. Uh, right now, we're still in the in construction phase within the school, but you will see this set up by the time you log in in preparation for the 21st. Okay. Uh, it's right about now where I am going to conclude this live session. Uh, I really hope that it's been helpful to see a showcase of some of the courses. Uh, as we went throughout this presentation, we saw that a lot of questions did come in. Uh, so looking at the time, I just want to be mindful of that. I'm going to take us back over to the presentation and I'm going to do uh, my best to see if we can field some of those questions. Uh, so uh, Tammy, if you are able to pull some of those up, take us away with some of the questions that came in. 
Okay, so we were really lucky. We must have answered a lot of questions on the chat or during the presentation. So there were only two questions that came in. The first one is, do the iPads have cases for protection? That's a fantastic question. Uh, like we mentioned beforehand, we really want to try to stretch the lifespan uh, out of iPads as long as possible. So with that, uh, we are lucky enough to have iPad cases. Uh, that being said, uh, as you can imagine, everyone in just about the world right now is probably scrambling to grab some iPad cases. So uh, we are expecting a few more to arrive. Uh, we're anticipating that we'll hopefully have them ready for when we distribute uh, the backpacks and all the other materials that Mrs. Salt went. Uh, fingers crossed they come in time. We're really hoping that they do. Uh, but at this moment, yes, we do plan to have those and also give those to you when we give out the iPads. Okay. Question number two, um, is there financial relief for parents uh, for data Wi-Fi use and expenses? Is something like that available? Yeah, I, I think that's a really uh, good question. Uh, at this moment in time, it's not something that I have a personal answer to. Uh, I'll see if uh, Mrs. Salt or Mrs. Shawner wants to add anything, but if not, uh, what we'll have to do with that one is just park it to the side and uh, see if we can uh, get an answer for that person soon in the next little while. Um, and that'll be something we can probably uh, summarize our response to when we post the video recording link uh, the next day tomorrow. Um, Mrs. Shown or Mrs. Salt, uh, otherwise we'll, we'll try to get that answer for you soon. Well, I, I'm under the understanding that the iPads that were purchased do come with a data package. So yes. I don't believe that there would be um, too many expenses beyond that. That's the type of um, iPad that we chose for this online learning. And I think as well, when parents were contacted with the survey, um, when we were deciding about online learning and what was going to happen, um, when the survey was conducted, I think all the families were contacted whether they had Wi-Fi and what kind of, if they had good service. So that will also go into um, determining the, the Wi-Fi and, and data um, availability. So yeah, I think Mr. Medway was on the right track when we can maybe summarize that, um, maybe get a, an official statement from the Director of Education about that. Yep. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, next question. We got a few more rolling in here. Will attendance or participation be monitored for Zoom classes yep. and go into the overall marks? Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic question. Uh, I would say that's kind of a two-parter. Let me start with the first part first. Uh, so short answer is yes. Uh, one thing that is really good about D2L as an online learning platform is we are at our administrative level able to generate reports to track students' login activity. So for instance, we can see how often students are logging in, uh, when they're logging in, uh, how long they're logging in for, uh, and it gets really, really granular. So if we want to, we can even look at content and see, you know, how much content have they viewed? How long are they looking at things for? So I'll let you know without getting too technical, uh, we have reports set up behind the scene, which will let us know which of our students are logging in and also which of the ones aren't. And that's mostly just to make sure that especially in the first couple of weeks, if there are some technical issues, uh, maybe there's an issue with the iPad, maybe there's an issue with connecting to the internet or what have you, uh, we can flag those students so that we get them the support they need uh, to get into the platform uh, and set up with online learning. Uh, that being said, uh, assessment is at the discretion of the teacher. Uh, looking at it as just a attendance uh, perspective wouldn't be, in my opinion, uh, the best way to assess or evaluate, uh, but we will be looking for them to uh, produce a variety of assessment items. Uh, so there's going to be products uh, where we might ask them to submit some sort of project or assignment. Uh, there's going to be conversations that's happening within the Zoom session. Uh, then there's also going to be observations as well. So as we collectively triangulate that assessment, uh, that'll be probably a more accurate reflection of what to expect in terms of an actual type of evaluation in the course. But that being said, uh, if you do have particular questions about assessment, don't hesitate to reach out to your uh, grade specific teacher. Uh, they can provide you with some more insight in uh, what to expect on how your uh, child is gonna be graded. But yes, there will be an evaluation component. 
Okay, what happens if our child misses the Zoom meetings? Is there attendance? I think we kind of covered that in the last question. We did, but I will add a detail with that too. Uh, one thing that's quite nice with Zoom is the way it's set up inside the courses. Uh, if it's a whole class instruction, uh, it's very likely that that Zoom session is going to be recorded. So from directly inside the course, uh, you'll be able to click an, an icon in the future, which says Zoom, and then that'll allow them to see the upcoming meetings, but you'll also be able to see inside their recordings as well. So uh, we understand life happens. Uh, and that being said, if you, if you weren't able to uh, attend a session for you know, an extenuating circumstance, which occurs all the time, uh, that recording is there uh, and it's available to be watched afterwards uh, to also make sure that, you know, that student isn't missing out on any information. Okay, the next question, when will we know who our child's teacher is? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I know right <laughs> now that uh, the courses inside our online learning environment have been set up. Uh, from an administrative perspective, uh, just about all of our staff has been hired for the year. Uh, and I'm confident that that information will be released soon. Uh, if it's not in the immediate future, uh, it'll definitely be provided to them when you receive your backpacks. Uh, Catherine or, or sorry, Mrs. Shauna or uh, um, Mrs. Salt, do you mind, do you want to comment on that as well or, or should we leave it at that? I think you answered that fairly well. I think if it's, when you pick up the backpack, that should indicate your classroom teacher and there'll be yeah. a schedule in there as well. Um, most likely that would be the easiest way to get that information out. I echo that. <laughs> okay, next uh, question. Speaking of iPad cases, will there be screen protectors for the iPads? Ooh, uh, I'm not aware myself of if they have screen protectors. I know the cases are coming if the cases have that built in. Uh, that's a question mark for me, but something we can look into. Uh, do you guys want to add anything? I have no idea if they're screen protectors. Yeah. I didn't pick out the cases, but did I. yeah, yeah, we can look into that as well. Let's uh, let's make a note of that, and uh, we can have a response for that probably by okay. tomorrow. No problem. Okay. Um, and what size are the iPads, just in case we want to purchase ex accessories to help mount it, mount iPads, etc. They are the the bigger size, but I don't know the actual dimensions of it. Yeah, that's an easy look up for us too. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't the one that ordered them as well. However, I have been playing with one in my office and I can tell you, I know this is not specific, but it is definitely the bigger one. Uh, we'll make sure we get you the size, uh, the actual size tomorrow. Yeah, it's not the iPad mini, but it's not the great big one that looks like a laptop um, yeah. screen. Okay. Yep. Um, the next question is, will headphones be provided? Um, I can answer, I can sort of answer that one. Maybe Catherine can uh, back me up on this one. So headphones are being provided to students that require them according to any um, accommodations that they need uh, based on need. Catherine, is there anything you want to add to that? I think um, you're right on par with that. I think we're considering to where we have multiple children in one household where they could be online at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that may pose a challenge where they may need a device to help them navigate that with sound. So mm -hmm. I think we are looking into that. They have, the uh, headphones have been purchased. It's just a matter of assigning them. Okay, next question. Will a child lose marks if they cannot attend a scheduled Zoom lesson due to their parents' work commitments, et cetera? Yeah, that's uh, a, a variation, I would say, of the question that was uh, answered beforehand. Um, I, I want to make sure that uh, that's definitely a conversation you have with uh, your child's direct teacher. Um, I really think that it's important from an evaluation perspective uh, to look at where that student is uh, at the end of that learning opportunity. Uh, so, for instance, uh, from an administrative perspective, uh, Growing for Success uh, which is a ministry document that guides a lot of assessment evaluation across schools, uh, would, would say no. Um, it's really important on uh, looking at what that student case showcased, uh, what that evidence of learning actually is, uh, not just the amount of time attending. However, from my professional experience, there usually is a correlation between 
uh, attendance and performance. So, uh, of course, you know, uh, try to attend as much as possible. Uh, if in the event you know you can't attend a session, uh, try to start some of those communication channels with your teacher and let them know ahead of time. So alternative uh, arrangements can always be made uh, in advance. Okay, next question. Are there accommodations going to be made for special needs students? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, without getting into a lot of technical details, another big benefit of Desire to Learn is a lot of the tools that are available inside D2L uh, have the ability to differentiate content and materials for students. Uh, so I'll just give, give you one small example. Uh, this really is just the tip of the iceberg, but content, for instance. Uh, we, we take uh, that student's individual uh, education plan very seriously. And it's important to make sure that we're following what's outlined in there. So content, for instance, allows us to, uh, if needed, put students into different groups to tailor the learning materials that each person receives within that course. Uh, so I know that might sound kind of abstract at the moment, but the short answer is yes. Uh, content amongst many other tools inside D2L can be utilized to make sure that we are meeting those accommodations. Uh, that being said, uh, if, if some of the accommodations are more so specific ones related to things like uh, extra amount of time uh, and so on, uh, that's definitely something that I'm sure the teacher will keep in mind uh, throughout their uh, delivery. Okay, will printing documents be required? And if so, are printers, paper, ink being provided for those who don't have access to these resources? It's a great question. You shouldn't need to do that. Um, the only exception I can think of is if you wanted to, um, <laughs> if you wanted to print off that digital certificate that you may earn in the future. Um, mo most of the assessment in the learning activities, uh, although uh, students are getting hard copies of things sent home in the backpacks and the containers. Um, most of the things will be over time done digitally. So I mentioned this briefly before, but D2L's portfolio tool does allow students to take pictures of their evidence of learning to then submit digitally, which can be collected digitally uh, from, from, from their teachers. Uh, so a lot of the back and forth will be hopefully captured through that. Uh, that being said, uh, I see Mrs. Salt has raised her hand, so I'm going to I'm going to let her add to my response too. I don't think I raised my hand, but I do have something to add. Oh, um, please, I, think, yeah. I think it's important to um, note that um, the students will be receiving a stylus pen mm -hmm. um, that, will, that you can use with the iPad. So any, like, just, I, I'm just grasping at straws here, but like if a teacher sends a worksheet, you can work on it digitally and take a screenshot of it and then upload it to your portfolio. So as Mr. Medway was saying, you really shouldn't have to print anything. Everything can be done on the iPads. Yeah, and, and that's going to vary a little bit amongst grades. Uh, honestly, it's something that everyone is going to get accustomed to with over time. Uh, that's students and teachers. Uh, but we really are trying to transition to making this really uh, a fully digital experience where we can. I'd like to add to that too, and I believe the grades four to eight will be receiving keyboards in addition to their iPads that they can connect so they can word process on their iPads and then save the document and upload it to their portfolio. Okay, next question. Are all of the apps that are going to be downloaded on the iPad, are all of the apps that are, uh, is it going to be downloaded on the iPad when they pick them up? Great question. So behind the scenes, uh, we've been working very hard to set up exactly what you're thinking. Uh, again, without getting too technical, uh, we have a mobile device manager, which allows us to control what's on those devices. So upon initial rollout, uh, we're planning to push out, uh, which is a fancy way of saying, put on all the iPads, certain applications. Uh, so that way, when you have access to the iPad, there will already be at a starting point, certain apps that we decide uh, we wanna have you have access to as a school. Now, that being said, uh, this is the starting point. So over time, uh, we are hoping to add to that and also tailor it based upon each grade. Uh, but the short answer of your question is, when you receive your iPad, uh, you will receive some school-wide apps already pushed to it. Uh, an example of that would be one uh, portfolio uh, and likely some of the other applications that Mr. Shaw and I mentioned a little while ago as well. Um, next question is, who is the grade seven, eight teacher? 
<laughs> That's a great question. Uh, that we can answer. Uh, we have uh, made a decision on that. Uh, the grade seven, eight teacher is uh, Mrs. O'Donnell. Uh, she has a lot of years of experience uh, in teaching. Uh, she started teaching in Grand Erie. Uh, she then worked out in Saskatchewan. Uh, she's been in Six Nations the last few years. Uh, prior to that, she was actually at LSK for a, for a, a short-term contract. And uh, yep, now she's going to be the grade seven, eight teacher. Uh, so I'm sure in the next little while, virtually at least, you'll definitely get to know her. Um, is there an option on Brightspace for students to work together outside of class meetings through Zoom for those who may work better in groups? Ooh, really good question. Uh, there is a groups tool inside D2L that students can use. Uh, realistically though, although it's there, uh, because of the learning curve that's ahead of us, it's not something that'll be likely utilized in the immediate future. Um, there's lots of video conferencing programs out there which will allow students to collaborate. Uh, Zoom could be potentially set up as a means to do that. Uh, at this point in time, we haven't had specific discussions on uh, the exact use case that you're describing. Uh, however, uh, we will definitely encourage uh, different forms of technology in addition to D2L to help achieve uh, what, what I think it is you're looking for. Uh, so short answer. Um, we hope to, uh, we have the technology to do it, but we also want to be mindful of this transition. So, uh, expect that, uh, not in the immediate future, but a little bit down the road. Uh, what kind of penalty we will be put in place if an iPad becomes back damaged? Right. Um, in those situations, uh, I think it'll always be, uh, a case by case basis. Uh, we, we really want to. Uh, encourage proper usage um, and also make sure that we take care of it uh, but you know we have to factor in the whole situation uh, if in the event unfortunately, unfortunately something like that occurs uh, so I, I don't want to put out a blanket statement which says uh, you know something uh, doom and gloom you know you're, you're gonna get this uh, kind of coming to you but uh, uh, you know it's something we have to assess we really at this point in time want to encourage you know try to be careful with it uh, but, you know, if in the event something happens, uh, that's definitely a conversation we can have. Um, and then someone asked, maybe I missed this earlier, do the live Zoom sessions get saved on the student portal for future rewatching? Great question. Uh, yep. Uh, so the majority of them will. Uh, the only time the live Zoom sessions may not be recorded is, as Mrs. Sharona mentioned, uh, built into the teacher schedule, there may be one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, or things of that nature. And it may not be or really applicable for the rest of the class to have access to that. So it really would be for the whole class. Uh, means most likely, uh, and for those which is Uh, I time. I see that we are just above, and I'm at uh, put to the side. Uh, Mr. Medway, your sound is cutting out for me. I'm not sure if that's happening for other people. Oh, no. um, um, we do we do have a few more questions, but I'm wondering if those. Yeah, um, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Just in case uh, I didn't come across clearly a moment ago, uh, I, I also want to be mindful of time. Uh, we go out for us for there tonight. If we get your question, receive uh, our sincerest apologies. We'll make sure that we and we follow up to them uh, in a separate message that we can try to put out tomorrow. Uh, I'll also just give you a heads up. I've talked internally about hosting another full Q and A session uh, to field more of the questions that I'm sure are out there. So uh, please uh, pay close attention to the uh, 
uh, communication channels that uh, you would have seen this video posted on. Uh, we'll hopefully have some more information related to that soon. But uh, yeah, Mrs. Salt, let's do one more question and then call it quits for there for tonight. Okay, so um, this is a good one actually because other people might be thinking the same thing. It says, please correct sure. me if I'm wrong, but with the schedule example discussed through the presentation, so I'm thinking they're referring to Mrs. Salt's presentation, um, Mrs. Salt's yep. schedule, yep. are students required to attend the amount of hours at home the same as they would at school from 8.30 to 3 p.m.? Uh, no, it, it's not exactly like that. Uh, let's go back a little bit to the slide. Uh, th so these are approximations, uh, but Mrs. Shauna, do you mind commenting on this a little bit? Absolutely. So during the school day, for example, a primary student is at school from nine o'clock to three o'clock with two nutrition breaks and two active breaks within that space. Um, in this case, that, we are not expecting a primary student, for example, to be online for that long. A primary student basically would log on in the morning for a half or actually it's for kindergarten or grade one, two, it's 20 minutes, to 30 minute session as a whole group with their class. And then they may log on again for 20 minutes and then again, maybe in the afternoon for another 20 minute session. So um, it is not all day in front of the computer. There's breaks in between and um, that's kind of what we're looking at. Yeah, uh, we're totally mindful of what's realistic for students, especially in different grades. And we feel like that's reflective in the chart that Mrs. Shalana uh, just revisited and, and reiterated. For more information though, on what your actual uh, child's day will look like, uh, make sure that you take a look at the schedule that's gonna be put in the backpack, or if you are interested in digital copy, uh, like you saw me do a little bit earlier in Mrs. Salt's class, once you log in eventually to your course, you'll see that schedule here. This will paint for you a much clearer picture of what to expect for your specific grade. Uh, so that being said, I'm looking at the time and it is at 7.05. Uh, although it'd be nice to keep going, uh, I just wanna be mindful of everybody else's time this evening. Uh, and it's at this point in time, we'd like to say an official uh, wetch. Uh, thank you. Uh, this was our first attempt at doing a Zoom webinar session. Uh, and I think at one point in time, I saw we reach over 50 participants, which was great. Uh, we do really uh, sincerely thank you for attending this evening. Uh, we're all in this together and we're, we're here to help each other out as we make this big transition. Uh, this just being one more big step closer to uh, moving fully online. Uh, any final words, uh, Mrs. Salt or Mrs. Shauna? Um, I just wanted to say a chi to uh, James Medway. He has led the charge um, on, with this online learning and is such a leader for our teachers. Um, I hope that the parents can come to trust him as much as our staff has. Um, so chi uh, Mr. Medway. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Yes. And I'd also like to state if we can get a maybe a picture of these extra questions that are coming in and possibly we can add a frequently asked questions to our LSK website. That might Absolutely. be a way that we can address them um, and have them posted. Yeah, uh, I'm fairly confident from a technical perspective, all of these should be captured, but I will err on the side of caution and I'm going to do a really big copy before we head out of here, uh, just to make sure we don't leave anybody out. Uh, I really like your next step too. Uh, let's, let's talk about that a little bit more tomorrow and see if we can put that resource out. Okay. Well, that being said, thank you very much for attending our very first uh, <laughs> information session. Uh, we really appreciate it and we look forward to uh, hopefully delivering more of these in the future. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Miigwech, bama pi. Bama pi. Miigwech.